Anything, pray that little kids don't get poisoned by this in school. If anything, listen, if you, if, if you got these adults wanting to do perverted things and kill themselves and, 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 and they choose to do that, hey, all we can do is tell them. But we have to stand in the gap and protect the children. We have to. And if anything, pray. If anything, pray for our kids. Matter of fact, we have a sheet. When you leave here today, if you want to make your voice heard, in Sacramento, here in, in, in San Diego, pick the sheet up and we'll give you information to give. We also have a, 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 um, a DVD that focused on the family, did a simulcast they did on this topic. We have it in the bookstore. Get this CD of the sermon that I'm preaching right now. If you're from out of town, give it to your pastor. Say, we need to do something. Because kids are being poisoned right now with this, with this uh, ideology. Next one. We need to pray for the, the pri righteous need to pray for God's intervention. The righteous need to provide security for the needy. Look at chapter 19, verse 9. 19, verse 9. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 19, verse 1 to 3. It says, The two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting at the gate of the city. And when Lot saw them, he arose to meet them and bowed his face to the ground. And he says, Here now, my lords, please come to my house and spend a night. Wash your feet. I'll eat you, feed you, and then early in the morning, you got to go. The gate of the city was the entrance of the city, and Lot's sitting there looking out, seeing who's coming. And when he sees these newcomers, he goes, fellas, hurry up over here. No, no, we want to sleep outside, they said. He said, no. <laughs> you cannot sleep outside. You need to come to my house. As a righteous man, I am representing God, and I need to offer protection for you. Please come to my house, because this is not a safe place. And matter of fact, after you get up in the morning, you got to get out of here. Because it's dangerous before they can even go to bed. Bring those men out. We want to have sex with them. That's our role. Call your kid's school up and ask them two questions. Do they believe that homosexuality is normal and natural? Remember, if you, break a na if you break a law, if it's natural, there's no consequences. But if, you, if it's unnatural, the consequences will be evident. And I read those to you. And you can go and find a ton more of consequences because it's unnatural. Ask them if they believe it's natural and, and, and healthy. And then ask them, are you telling the children that? Your children. Because if you don't tell your children the right thing, your, the school will tell them what they believe is right. And before you know it, they'll be looking at you like you're crazy because you believe in the Bible. Call your school up. That's your job, to protect the innocent. Next one. The righteous point out sin and coming judgment. And when I say point out sin, not you're a sinner and I'm not, you're unrighteous and I'm not, but this is wrong. And God is going to deal with it. As iron sharpens iron, so another man sharpens another man. Now, whether you know gay people or not, some of you know people who are committing adultery. Some of you know people who are fornicating. Now we're talking heterosexual. It's sin too. Some of you know people who are abusing drugs. As a Christian, someone who loves God and someone who loves that person, your responsibility is to tell them that. This young lady I was to arguing with uh, Tuesday night, trying to protect her brother. I said, look, if you love your brother, you need to tell him the truth. Don't tell him what he wants to hear. Tell him the truth, because in the end, he's going to face God. And in the end, he's going to be judged by God. Whether you believe that or not, it's true. You know, in about five or ten minutes, all y'all are going to walk out of here. That's a fact. Now, you could stay if you want. But I think about 11 o'clock at night, they shut the door, close the lights, and you got to go. You don't have to go home, but you got to get up on out of here. That's a fact. I was driving here this morning, and, and, and this police officer flew by me. He was, I was going under the bridge, uh, and, and he came flying on the arm. He was on a motorcycle. He was yanking and banking. He banked to the right, banked to the left, flew over five lanes, going about 90 miles an hour to catch him to this car that was going probably about 80. I don't know how far that car, fast that car was going. I just know I was in the slow lane abiding by the law. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> and he went, what? I was like, go ahead, brother. Wow, wow. Had his red and blue lights on. Woo, 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 woo. And that dude driving that car that got stopped, he might have in his mind thought, 
I'm not doing anything wrong. Or everyone else is doing it. Or I'm not going to get caught. Or I was born this way. <laughs> There's no evidence of at all being born gay. It doesn't matter what got him to 85 miles an hour. He was wrong. And the policeman stopped him. It don't matter how you get there. How you get there doesn't determine whether there is wrong or right. You catch somebody in the bed with your wife, it don't matter how he got there. It don't matter what she said. It's wrong. Look in your notes. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the righteous point out sin and judgment. Turn to uh, chapter 19, verse 9. It says in 19, verse 9, they said, stand back. They said, this one came to sojourn, and he keeps acting as a judge. He keeps acting as a judge. You ever hear people, Christian people, be called uh, judgmental? Oh, yeah. It's right there. Why? Because people who do, people who want to do what they want to do don't want to hear that it's wrong. If someone comes up to me and points out something that I'm wrong, which, which happens, if they're right, I'm wrong. Who am I to, how can I say you're judging me if they're right? The Bible is right. And they will, you will be called judging people. All we're doing is pointing out sin. You know, it's like every, every day we got a whole station called Court TV. You know what that station is based on that logic? It's a judgmental show. And it's a judgmental system. Because we're telling people they're wrong. Why? Because there's right and wrong. Isn't that interesting? Look at the next one. The righteous response of God. One, God will send a warning. God will send a warning. He sent the angels, please get out. Look at chapter 18, verse 20. If you ever hear someone say, though, well, you, what, how, what did the Lord Jesus ever say against homosexuality? Well, one, the whole Bible is the word of God. Jesus is the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. All the Bible is Jesus' words. But if you really want to get technical, what did Jesus say from his mouth? It's not only the red letters. Look at verse 20. This is Jesus speaking right here. It says in verse 20, the Lord said, the Lord said, because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. You know what God said? It's grievous. I've heard it. Look at chapter 19, verse 13. 19 verse 13, for we, these are the angels speaking, we will destroy this place because the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Who was crying out to God? I give you, I, I'm going to take two guesses. One, it was the righteous. God, please come down and deal with this. But I'm going to guess, and I could be wrong, that it was the little kids who was suffering because of it. It's not natural. Therefore, you will suffer. You know, if you molest a child, which is not natural, they suffer. If you do what our schools are teaching is normal, they suffer psychologically, physically, emotionally. They suffer. And I wonder how many little kids today are experiencing this inner turmoil of why they hurt, but they don't know why. And why homosexuals five times more likely to commit suicide? It's not because they're discriminated against. I got discriminated against. Women get discriminated against. You don't see them killing ourselves because of it. No, you just fight. The reason they're depressed is because of God's judgment and, and the, the alienation from God. And the emotional stress of the sin itself. The judgment of the sin itself. God turning someone 